Well, hello, CrossCart fans. Uh, today, we are installing some more uh, visual items. Could be functional if you ride at night. I just grabbed a scrap piece of bent tubing from my pile of scrap tubing. And this is going to be the light bar, or C52. Now, I'm going to do this in two pieces just to make it easier. But essentially, I'm just kind of fitting this up, checking the height I want, checking the angle that I like the most. And this is gonna have four lights, two on top and two on the sides, just for my preference. But you can do this however you want. You can omit this from the plans. But I got a pretty slick way of mounting this and making it removable. Gonna be a fun day. Stay tuned. All right, so now you can start to get a picture of what we're doing here. We've got our two pieces, which we're gonna measure and cut and sleeve. Now, this, these are just holding lights, it's not structural. So we need to secure it, but it doesn't need to be like weight bearing. I halved up a piece of inch and a half to go around that. Now we gotta fit this up and figure out the notch angle to notch this and get this bar set. Now, whatever we do, we need to mirror it to the other piece. The only thing that's gonna make this look bad is, is if it ends up crooked in any way. So it's really important to mirror all of the work done. All right, so you can see this little sleeve works out really well. Put sleeve over it, it fits nice and tight, and then you have your notched piece. It goes on here. Now we're free to adjust this because we're welders, and since this isn't structural, we can just make up our angles and gaps with a little bit of weld. There's not gonna be a whole lot. So, if, uh, if your notch doesn't come out right, or it looks a little weird, don't worry about it. You can just fill it with weld. Now, hindsight, I could have just used a notcher, but this has a, a pretty complex angle to it, and I figured a little time with the die grinder would be less time than trying to figure up all the math and design it and create a cut wrapper, all that. And this looks really good right here. I'm gonna align it, and I'm actually just gonna tack it with a light tack, and then do the other side, try to match it up. Now, situations like this is the exact reason I have two magnetic levels. So we're gonna put our sleeve on, we're gonna put our bar on, we are going to check the angle on the side, and we are going to make sure it's level on the top. And when these two are exactly where you want it, tack it in, and then do the other side, and then we can figure out where to cut the center of these to match them up. This would be really hard to clamp in. So you get your magnets, and you can just hold it in place to tack it. Love these things. All right, so now we've got two sides properly tacked, leveled. Now I'm just gonna... Now, you guys know my saying, you can take away material, but you can't add material. All right, so now it's time to introduce the last member of this party, and that's just a little scrap piece of one inch tubing. Now, this isn't structural, so you could just butt weld it, I wouldn't see any problems with that, but this, this one inch piece is literally just to help with alignment and welding. So now we've got our light bar, 
Now, since these sides are on radius, you can really adjust this to exactly how you want it. And I like that. There's good clearance away from the chassis, so it's not gonna rattle, not that it's gonna be loose. The main part holding this together is that inch and a half that we cut in half. So anything that we use to attach it is just to hold that tight against this upper uh, A-arm attachment point. And look at that, it's just staying on its own. That is a good sign. So I'm gonna do the 20 yard look. Looks like I'm gonna have to trim just a little bit off of one side of that. And then it'll be nice and straight. All right, so now I'm just gonna tack this piece into place. That serves two purposes. Number one, it's gonna give the proper spacing uh, for the weld we're gonna put between these two tubes. And number two, it's gonna make this piece rigid so that we can clamp the bottoms on and get perfect alignment before we final mount it. All right, so there we go, it's tacked on. Let's move the camera up for you. All right, so now that we have this rigid piece, we put that side on and we put this side on and we can mount it exactly where we want it. And then we can clamp these sides in so that they're sitting flush because remember our, our strength is coming from that shape, not the mounting. So then you can clamp it in place you can get your perfect alignment everywhere. And then when you weld this center together, that's when it's gonna be its final permanent place. Oh yeah, that's nice. Now we'll probably take these clamps off. It should just sit on its own. Look at that. You put a bolt or a screw in that, it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be hard mounted. Looks good. I wish I had a little more room to walk around so you could get the 20 foot view like I have. Yep, I like it. It doesn't obstruct the view. It doesn't add any length to it. All right, so the bar is mounted and it's just these two bolts right here and it's on or off. Um, when we skin it, we can put the, the patch cover in that same bolt hole. So you'll have a piece of aluminum that covers the hole for the light bar so your skin stays good. They're just taped on right now because I'm not sure exactly how to put it. Um, you guys can thank Group B Rally for motivating this. Uh, in fact, you can thank Group B Rally for motivating this whole thing. I grew up wanting to know what it was like to drive one of those amazing cars with the sequential shifter and sideways around the corner. Now, obviously, this is not a rally car, but it drives like one. <laughs> it's everything you want to do in a car. So, for this one going all out, instead of doing the little tiny lights like on my other one, I wanted to make a removable light bar just like the Group B Rally guys with the big four light pod. So now I'm just trying to figure out the spacing, where to put them. If I'm gonna mount the lights right to the bar or if I'm gonna make tabs. Um, tabs is the right way to do it. That way you have full adjustability and you're not drilling right through your bar so your alignment's gonna be better. That's it, uh, let's make some tabs. All right, so for tabs, I'm just gonna pick whatever width looks the best. Here's an inch and a half. It doesn't quite cover the base of it, but two inch covers it nicely. So I think that'll help with the aesthetics. Um, I always have flat bar in stock. If I get low, I'll go and get another couple pieces. You never know when you're gonna need it. Like I didn't anticipate 
making uh, tabs for these because I thought I'd just mount them to the bar, but looking at it more, they should be on tabs, either front or back. All right, now once you have that, uh, all that's left is to wire it. Should be easy. We don't have to leave it on there. All right, now the reason I put the tabs on the back side of this bar is because I thought it would make the front look cleaner, which it does. But I also want to run the wiring very cleanly. So I'm gonna wrap it back under like that, and I'm gonna take just a, uh, a wire tie, and I'm gonna make a, kind of a sub harness for these lights. Well, I don't think you'll have any trouble competing in the uh, ninth stage of that rally. Look at that. These are all adjustable. I left room to put them on a swivel and up and down. We'll get them tuned in some, uh, some nice warm night. Look at that. So cool. Just like a rally car. All right, so the wiring for these is uh, nice and tidy. I just ran it down the back side of the bar and this access hole we're gonna have in the side plate, there's gonna be a connector. Uh, I don't have one on hand, but it's just gonna be a two prong automotive connector. I just gotta splice it here and put it in. Uh, it's run to the switch. The switch runs to the positive uh, main cutoff battery terminal. That's a long name for that. It's probably got a simpler name, just main switch. Um, so that it works off the switch instead of the key. Um, just in case the bike wiring gets fouled up, you still have some lights if you need them. Uh, it's still gonna cut it off from the battery when that main switch is off. And the ground, uh, I just ran it over to the, the chassis ground from the battery. Uh, I could have made its own in here, but it's just a short distance. We can tidy up these wires and that's it. Pretty cool, removable light bar. Oh, I love it, I love it. All right, so the next order of business is the tail light. Now I just ordered a DRZ 400 tail light because I like how they look. Now this isn't 100% race spec. Uh, the race spec requires one light be on all the time and two separate brake lights. I'm probably not gonna race this in a sanctioned European cross cart challenge, but I do want to build one that's that's cool and to spec. So don't don't be too hard on me for picking a cool tail light rather than having the big three lights on the on the back of it. I'm kind of a simple guy when it comes to the brake. I do like to have a light on at all times, and I like to have it shine brighter with the brake. This is exactly what this does. Um, as you can see, it's just two prongs. So we're just going to make two tabs. It's got a three wire harness. Uh, one for the constant, one for the ground, and one for the brake light. 
and we'll just tie those into the factory wiring. So I'm not going to show a whole lot of this because it's already done. The brakes aren't going to be active because we don't have any pressure on the brake system and the switches I use work off of brake pressure. So we'll get the tabs, we'll get it mounted up. And we got our light, got two tabs. I just used one inch, one inch flat bar. Pretty easy stuff. You can use one and a quarter. I just uh, measured the available space I had. And we're gonna have to be really careful welding this because this is plastic. So super, super light tacks once these are in position. It's an easy one, I like easy ones. And there we go, one tail light. Um, I gotta redo the harness, I'll order that part up. I'm, I'm just trying to get the stuff that needs welded out of the way. Um, wiring's easy, especially DC lighting. So if we wanted to add the correct ones, it would be super easy. We could probably use the same mounts just get a different bar mounted on there. But I think this looks really cool on this as it is. Uh, it does clear the exhaust, if you can't see that. It's not hidden behind here. 